um but more than you know governments etc and this is also the reason and the, the mindset with which i started why waste was to make every single citizen realize that they can be a part of the solution and not be dependent on an external body you know if you just reduce the amount of water that you are consuming if you just change your habits if you just change your mindsets towards this resource you can be saving over 100 liters of water every single day and that is a phenomenally large amount and so Greetings ladies and gentlemen today it is an honor and a pleasure for me to introduce you all to this very particular session where we are going to know more about the India's water crisis my name is Harsh and I'm going to moderate this session for all of you wherein I'm going to introduce you all about the event and perhaps the person who is going to interact and address all of us first of all i request you to kindly acknowledge and welcome the presence of our esteemed guest madam garvita gulati who is here with us I would like to request all the person those who are watching this session on YouTube to kindly upload in the comment section and welcome the presence of our guest Madam Garvita Gulati is the founder of Why Waste she founded Why Waste 5 year ago to make individuals and institution more aware of water conservation the largest youth led organization of its kind in the country Why Waste is ch- changing mindsets and habit through achievable activities including its glass half full and the how to save 100 water every day app Madam Garvita was nominated by Ashoka Innovator for the public which supports world largest network of social entrepreneurs and I believe her profile has so many things so many glories which I won't be able to explain in a few minutes but I'm pretty sure during this conversation we are going to learn a lot from her so first of all ma'am I welcome you to in this session thank you so much for joining and agreeing to share your thoughts with us we are extremely very happy to have you No, um, I want to thank you all so much for calling me here and I really look forward to the Uh, thank you so much ma'am it's our pleasure to uh, so moving to the topic of today's session which we have chosen is india's water crisis the clock is ticking uh, ma'am my first question to you is or rather say it's a kind of request to you kindly explain our viewers uh, how actually why is india facing water crisis even it is called the land of mighty rivers right absolutely i would love to um, you know share my thoughts on that so there are a lot of reasons why today a lot of countries in the world are facing a water crisis now one of the key reasons why a country like india is facing a water crisis is one because of um, the high population that we have second if you actually go dive deeper you will notice that different demographics in india have a different perception and reality of what the water crisis really is and so there are a lot of places whose weather does not support um, you know probably um, rainfall or does not they the there are places that do not have freely flowing rivers and lakes that are causing the water crisis but another major reason is because india is one of the countries that has dug up the maximum number of groundwater bore wells in the world we have dug up over 22 million bore wells in comparison to the united states that has dug up only 1 million and china that has dug up only 2 million and out of these 22 million over and almost all of them in fact have been used to their fruition to the complete and so you can only imagine the amount of groundwater that we have sucked up and most of this goes towards agriculture or residential use and um, another reason that there is such a, a big water crisis is because we are constantly polluting and drying up our lakes um and so there it's it's really not just one thing but an amalgamation of issues that is causing the water crisis in our country today 
All right, ma'am. Ah, uh, ma'am, my second question to you. Ah, uh, Radha, say I must. Ah, uh, I'm pretty sure you have explained ah uh, many places in uh, many of the your interviews. You have explained already. Ah, uh, how actually you ah uh, you got the idea to save and make people aware uh, about the water crisis? Ah, uh, how actually you started? It will be very great if you could share uh, it here also. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, like you had mentioned, right, about five and a half years ago, I started reading about the water crisis. I was reading about farmers who were taking their lives because, you know, they didn't have the access to water and they weren't able to water their um, crops. And I was reading about women and children who were walking miles just to get a glass of water that we got without even moving a finger. And really, just the simple triviality of that whole. Um, you know realizing how we waste water without even thinking about it while there are people who are out there who don't even have the access to water are you know facing the issue was such an absolute you know um it it was two faces of a coin that you just don't want to see and uh, more than that i started reading more and more into deeper into the water crisis and i learned that 14 million liters of water is wasted every year simply due to the water that we leave behind in glasses at restaurants and the triviality of that egregious number just moved me completely and so much that i was compelled to start something um to change it and that day i became committed to saving every single drop of water that i possibly could through my initiative by waste Indeed, ma'am, it was really very inspiring, and I think the viewers, those who are watching this session, ah, uh, it will be fruitful for them. They will learn something, and I believe ah uh, that uh, the things which you are doing, it is really creating the difference on the ground level. Ah, uh, ma'am, my next question to you is, ah, uh, do you believe that ah uh, ministers and member of the parliament are ignorant about the water crisis in the country? Um, so again, this is a very uh, you know twofold kind of answer, right? Because um, there are everyone has to follow um, a particular set of rules, and and I I cannot say that they're not. Uh, that that they are ignorant because um there is an entire ministry that is dedicated to water the jal shakti ministry right and so <clears throat> you do know that there is something that is happening out there that there is work that is happening out there uh, but it's just the scale at which it's happening um but more than you know governments etc and this is also the reason and the the mindset with which i started why waste was to make every single citizen realize that they can be a part of the solution and not be dependent on an external body you know if you just reduce the amount of water that you are consuming if you just change your habits if you just change your mindsets towards this resource you can be saving over 100 liters of water every single day and that is a phenomenally large amount and so uh, you know what uh, what we even implore people to see through our initiative initiatives at why waste is to realize that don't be dependent on an external body or a ministry or complain to you know anyone saying you're not doing the job because this is a this is a problem that we all can be a part of the solution of and we completely encourage people and that's what we even do at why waste we our goal is to change the mindsets of people towards water by helping them optimize their usage and prevent their wastage and we do that by coming up with simple solutions that can help solve the global water crisis and so you know when you ask about whether is someone doing enough i think the water crisis is an issue where everyone needs to do enough and till the time everyone isn't doing enough um it's never going to be enough so i hope that answered your question indeed ma'am it was a quite insightful answer from your side uh, and i think that uh, the things which are uh, in which the, way, uh, the you are thinking about this everybody need to think uh, in this way only then only we can tackle this uh, great crisis uh, ma'am my next question to you is uh, is large scale desalination an answer to water crisis or it is a bad that's a lovely environment 
Yep, no, no, that's a lovely question. Um, so here, here's the thing about desalination, right? At the moment, there is no technology that is cheap enough to support desalination um, in all countries, right? Only rich countries can afford it. That's the first thing. The second thing is a, one of the byproducts of desalination is brine. Now, this is not the regular brine, which is just, you know, salt water. This is highly concentrated. And the only way to dispose it of currently is to put it back into the oceans. And in in all of the regions, if you go back and study or read, the regions where they are dumping back this brine are completely getting destroyed. The, the ocean, that, that particular section is completely getting destroyed. And finally, once so, so something that I mentioned earlier as well, right? Right now, desalination is only uh, being is, is only affordable to particular countries. Moving forward, even if there is a solution that might allow almost all coastal countries to be a part of, um, you know, uh, the whole process of desalination, what's going to happen is that all of the inland countries are going to miss out on this and this is going to create larger inequalities and divides. And so overall, it is not an ideal solution because even if we do make it affordable, we are going to see inequalities in the future for who has access to it because it's only the coastal countries who will um, be able to um, desalinate water for very obvious reasons. And then it's going to become a commodity just like petrol. Water is a universal elixir of life that's supposed to be freely available for everyone and we're going to make it into a commodity, uh, putting a price on it and um, it's, just, it's just not going to be sustainable. All right, ma'am. Um, and my next question to you is, uh, uh, how desalination can affect the environment? Um, so, so like I mentioned, right, one of the byproducts of desalination is brine, and when this brine is dumped, so the only way to dispose of brine at the moment is to dump it back into the ocean, and when you do this, um, is when it completely damages the entire marine life in that area. All right, ma'am. I think you have again. It was a quite insightful answer from your side. Um, and my next question to you is: uh, What do you believe? What are the things uh, that every common citizen can do to help reduce the effect of the upcoming environmental crisis, like the global warming and water shortage? Absolutely. I think it is the first thing that you all like that everyone needs to do is just become mindful about the issue, right? Become mindful about its existence and realize that it is not just a few policies or a few laws or a few private companies or even nonprofits whose work is going to be enough to help solve this crisis. Uh, the crisis needs every single person to change their perspectives, their outlooks, and their habits. Until the time we don't instill this in every single citizen, we aren't going to see the difference that we want to see in terms of global warming or any of the other environmental crises that we are facing today. We need every single person to change their habits. Everyone in the world is a consumer. So if you switched over to sustainable products, you can be already contributing so much to reducing the carbon footprint, water footprint, and even your um, overall footprint in towards global warming and so it is really the job of every single citizen to go out there and speak for themselves to be a part of the solution because this is one place where simply by acting differently you can help make a difference there might not be any other crises uh, where you know uh, it's a collective effort where everyone's efforts would matter, um, you know, but this is something where all of us can work together to change it. And that is the ray of hope. That is the, you know, the outlook that we need to have, that we need to get everyone on board because once we're all together, we can make a difference. Indeed, ma'am. I think it's a kind of privilege today we got to hear all these things from you. Uh, ma'am, my next question to you is, actually this is an optional question if you would like to share, uh, ma'am, what is the next peak of why waste to conquer? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, so we don't, uh, you know, 
plan as such even with the glass half full movement when it went viral in 2019 it was not really planned uh, what we just do is we do our work we believe in what we're trying to create we have a dynamic team of young leaders who are constantly working every single day trying to make this possible um and so we really hope uh that through our app the app that we've created uh, we're able to help everyone in the world calculate their water footprint and of course handhold them in their journey to saving water and we really hope uh that everyone begins to realize become more mindful and really be a part of the change uh to be a part of um what can be uh you know be a part of preventing what can be the next world war which could be the water wars and uh, we truly believe and hope that calculating your water footprint um can be that game changer or the mindset changer uh, but you know even if it does not reach peaks we just hope that it helps change the lives of the few people who do um stumble upon it indeed ma'am you people are really creating a really doing a great job and uh, i believe that more success come to your way uh ma'am my next question to you is uh it is a kind of request to you ma'am kindly explain more about uh, uh you glass half movement glass half yeah movement. absolutely absolutely so like in the beginning i talked about the <laughs> 14 million liters of water being wasted right um and really i started by ways with the motivation of wanting to take that number off the books off the charts and so i started visiting restaurants gathered a couple restaurants gathered a couple of my friends i was in high school back then uh, you know brought them together and said guys let's go to restaurants and start speaking to them and tell them ways in which they can save water and so we did that we started you know visiting more and more restaurants but in vain because none of them really wanted to listen to us none of them wanted to take advice from people. teenagers and also sadly our solutions didn't comply with them because they came from a hospitality industry and so um i came back and i reflected and i thought there has to be a way in which we can keep the restauranters happy the customers happy as well as us happy to be making a difference and that's when i came up with the glass half full idea which is a very interactive um uh you know concept where you fill the glass only half instead of filling it full and that way you take only as much water as you need and you don't waste this also helps strike a conversation between the customer and the waiter and that way they learn just a little bit more about the water crisis and what could be what is happening and um you know become more mindful and um from there we started realizing that a couple of restaurants are now picking this up because earlier they would say you know we don't want to take advice from teenagers but moving forward they really really became you know receptive uh, because the glass half life idea was something that complied it was something that they could do and execute even being in a hospitality industry so you know one thing as a change maker is to understand where you are at the place where you are at and the change that you are trying to make and so as we you know started reaching out to more restaurants we realized we were only able to touch the ones in our neighborhood and our locality and we needed to really get to every restaurant across the country and that's when i learned about the national restaurants association of india and started a petition to them uh, to be able to get this concept to the 5 lakh restaurants that they represent across the country and um for over over a year we campaigned and petitioned and um you know with a lot of um constant rigorous work reaching out to people um you know getting them the concepts helping them establish the concepts we finally were able to um you know build our partnership with the national restaurants association of india after an entire year of campaigning and we were able to reach the 5 lakh restaurants that they represent um today and through that process we were able to reach over 10 million people and save over 6 million liters of water but you know more than that the biggest win of glass half full was to see the change in the mindsets of people not just when they visited a restaurant but in every aspect and perspective of their lives they were looking at water with a more positive and optimistic mindset they were thinking about saving it in everything that they were doing they were looking at the glass half full and that i think was the biggest win for us along with the fact that glass half full has begun to live a life with its own and it's being adopted by people across the globe in so many different ways and in so many different um you know 
manners and in so many different institutes it's just really lovely to see that something that started out as a small movement is today changing the mindsets of millions of people all right ma'am uh, i would like to tell my viewers that uh, the by waste is the largest youth led organization of its kind in the country and it is uh, highly appreciated with uh, appreciated by the ladies like the kiran majumdar show ma'am like and uh, ma'am my next question to you is uh, uh, actually uh, in what age you started this and how you came to the, the how you came the idea of the app development mobile app development yeah absolutely so um i started by waste when i was 15 but uh, the app was something that we built last year um so uh, by the app so <laughs> we began to build the app about 2 to 3 months um into quarantine and uh, the motivation really behind it was quite simple um so as the uh, as the covid crisis was unfolding um we began to read information and i began to learn and there were so many statistics that showed that covid might lead us into the next water crisis because of the increase almost 10x increase in consumption of water simply due to uh, for hygienic purposes and moreover today there are 2 billion people across the globe who lack the access to water amidst a global health pandemic and more and more than any of that uh there are cities that are still set to run out of water so a couple of years ago we might have heard that you know cape town is going to run out of water um is going to hit day zero but what a lot of us didn't hear was that um they actually brought themselves out of that situation and that was simply by the collective efforts of every single citizens monitoring the amount of water that they're consuming on a daily basis and reducing their consumption and so i thought maybe if we can model this into a format that can reach millions of people we can help so many of them save water with over 25 cities in india set to hit day zero very very soon and several more across the world we needed every single person to start becoming mindful of their water consumption and realizing that this is not a commodity that is just out there for us to consume ruthlessly it is something that is the universal elixir of life and it is and every single person on this planet is deserving of an equivalent amount of it not a few priv- or not just a privileged few and that's when i decided we need to create an app that allows people to calculate their water footprints on a daily basis and also hand holds them through the journey of saving over 100 liters of water every single day by adopting very very simple methods that can help you change your habits and help you become more a part of the solution and now we're starting to take a more gamified approach to this and we truly believe that it is the duty of every single person to be a part of the change and today if you save some water at home if you don't consume um ruthlessly or just unsustainably you can be saving water for someone out there who doesn't have access to it and that is just so far Alright, ma'am. It was again a very wonderful answer from you, right? And, uh, ma'am, actually, uh, we are short of time, so moving to my last question of this session. Uh, actually, the ma'am question is, uh, what did what one piece of advice will you from you, right, to uh, all this new young gen- new young generation? How they can is how their uh, small effort can create a difference on the ground level. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, there are so many movements out there um, today, uh, but. the voice of young people is really what matters the most it's because we have those fresh minds and those growing minds that are growing up in a world of constant change and a world of constant problems and we grow up thinking of solutions and the world needs our solutions because we think more creatively because we are living it we are growing up in it and so that's why i would encourage every single young person to go out there and find what 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 they want to change to find that one passion of what is it that matters to you what is it that you know you want to make a difference in what what are those things that you have solutions to change go out there and start making a difference start talking to people around you start 
being the change that you wish to see in the world and this is something that i say very often but um i'd love to repeat it that you know change is the only constant but now the world is in the constant need for change makers we need everyone to be a change maker we need all of us to be a part of the solution we need everyone to ensure that they are doing their bit and that cannot happen without the younger generation which holds the largest population and more than all of our solutions and everything it's our energy that matters it's our energy that we bring to the table that we bring to the solutions that really make the biggest difference and that is why it is such an absolute pleasure to you know be a young person who can make a difference and to be even talking to you who who is who is doing such a wonderful job sharing journeys i think do whatever you can do you know even if it's some something that you can do sitting at home if it's something that you need to step out for find that one thing and do it because that is going to make a real difference in the world was really a very wonderful message from your side ma'am and i can share there is a lot to learn from you and the kind of energy you brought was very inspiring for all of us thank you so much ma'am for joining i think it was a very healthy discussion with you on the topic we look forward to conduct more such session with you in future uh, thank you so much ma'am for joining thank you so much for having me it was really lovely to speak with you same here ma'am thank you so much ma'am on the ground is where i stand never give up that was always the plan it's so cold yeah. outside i'm alone